Yeah, I think it's clogged. Again. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayona 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. This is what seems to be the problem with our sink drain here. So it comes out of the sink and it goes through a check valve. And that check valve is supposedly serviceable through this little cap right there so you can get to the swing check. But it tends to get corroded and just gummed up and it doesn't swing anymore. Why don't you wipe up that rust stain? Oh. Did you talk about that? Well, we just paint over it. We have. There's a slight stain up underneath here. And I don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from the part of the boat where we didn't change the deck core. So it tends to come down from here and leak into the bilge in a couple of different spots. And well, it's the same leak as in this cabinet over here. There. You can see it's all brown on top of there. So and, it's still dripping. And underneath it. Uh -huh. Other problem is this freaking seacock right here. And that thing, it takes practically a pipe wrench to uh, rotate it. So what I'm going to work on is getting that thing taken care of. And I think I'm going to take the swing check out and try and uh, clean it up. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because it keeps water from splashing up into the sink drain, you know, when you're on attack. But it also... Uh, when not maintained properly, they tend to stick. And either way, it's not a good situation. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. And it also blocks up the sink drain uh, when we're trying to use it. So, so let's start taking things apart. So this is what tends to collect. <laughs> in the drain over time. That's just what's on this side of the check valve. I can't wait to pull out the check valve, but <clears throat> this could be a source of our ongoing problems. Okay, so that, oh, yeah, buddy, here it comes. It keeps coming. <laughs> so this is that seacock I was telling you about, and it's really sticky. Like, you can't even freaking operate it. 
and I'm gonna have to do some work on that. But yeah, you gotta use like tools to close it. There, once you get it started, it usually goes. All right, plus there's no stop pin on it, so you never know when it's completely closed anyway. It doesn't seem as bad on the back side of the uh, check valve. I think the check valve is the issue. Ooh. All right, that's pretty much the bulk of it. This is the inside of that check valve. And there is ickiness abounds. Yeah, it's really pretty gooed up, both sides. So, let's take this thing apart. Just about. Uh, the basket strainer leaks underneath and the tailpiece was all rusty and corroded. I couldn't find one exactly like this um, at the local Hillbilly Hardware. So I have to change the whole basket strainer. Um, so, and of course the locking nut on the back is stuck. So, Dremel. What a crusty mess that the plumber's putting in. This is uh, our original. Yeah, I put it in when I put it in. Yeah. I noticed there's a big piece of rust on it. I don't know if you got that off earlier today. I saw it. Yeah, so oh. there you go. So that's what was uh just had to cut it off. I couldn't unscrew it. Mm. It was all seized up. It drains. Yeah, no leaks and it drains. Um just a quick engine update. Uh we got the uh risers epoxy down to raise the engine beds up. We used uh some sapile and uh, now it's just a matter of putting uh, rerouting the plumbing and doing that stuff underneath there and figuring out where I'm going to set the fuel line and everything up and then I think we can drop it in place and kind of test fit it. I do have to uh, get the new shaft coupling installed as well so that that's on the propeller shaft so that I can line everything up and then it did creep out of the stuffing box a little bit so I got to pull it up just a tiny bit like a sixteenth of an inch it moved out so get that thing lined up and centered and then when we drop the engine in we'll probably have to do a test fit and it may be I don't know I might have to move it in and out a couple of times but we'll see hopefully not I need to get some uh, motor mount shims and some threaded inserts uh, for the aft bolts there's no way to lag it down so anyway that's uh, pretty much where we're at right now stay tuned that thing's coming All right, Jenny. You have to. <laughs> Jenny, you're going to have to edit out all this noise. This is just bad. You know, I got a weak stomach. <laughs> Good lord, dude.